Like all Fear and Hunger videos, I want you to picture something. You're about 15 minutes into your first ever playthrough on Fear and Hunger. You are struggling. You figure you can save the game if you sleep, so you desperately look for a bed to sleep in. You narrowly avoid this big guy with torches for hands, and you find yourself a nice bed to sleep in. You've heard that you need a coin flip to save your game in this game, so you get ready for it, but when you sleep, there's no coin flip. You awake after saving and agreed with the message, you felt someone watch you as you slept. A little freaked out you continue, and after a little bit more exploring you go back to save again. This time you are greeted with the coin flip, and you fail. You awake to see this strange man with no cert and a crow for a head, and with a scary noise he attacks you mercilessly. This is the crow mall. He starts the fight with some very dangerous attacks such as maul, which will break your limbs, which will almost permanently lower your health, or if you're really unlucky and one of the only insta-kill moves in the game without a coin flip, he can use peck, which will instantly kill a party member. Then another attack he has is flock of crows, which can blind you, which sucks if you get hit and blinded. If it happens to a party member it's bad, but it's worse if it hits your main character, because even if you win the fight, your entire playthrough is now pointless, because you can no longer see almost at all. The entire screen will have this black overlay that makes things nearly impossible to see. Any of these three attacks can instantly make a whole playthrough pointless. My strat here, which may not be the best strat, is to take out his mauling arm and then do your best to just whittle his main torso health down. He surprisingly doesn't have a ton of health, only 1250. Killing the Crow Mauler grants you the Crow Mauler Soul and the Crow Emblem Key. But what does this key lead to, and who is the Crow Mauler? What is his story? What is his connection to the dungeon? Who is the double crow mauler you see much later in the game? Well, I have finally pulled myself away from Persona 3 Reload to tell you. Let's learn about the crow mauler's lore, shall we? However, to learn the story of the crow mauler, you have to learn about the guard's captain, Captain Rudimer. Why, you may ask? Well, let's read some of his diary entries found in the first Fear and Hunger game. Captain Rudimer, 16th of January, 1590. Schroeder once again went too far with his wicked methods. The prisoner was but a child, but already he had to go through so much torture that he, that he shit himself more than he bled. I must say I'm afraid of Schroeder to a certain degree. Sometimes I think I would do this world justice if I just offed him with my blade. Very few know, but Schroeder used to be a famed holy knight in Rondon back in the day. He was able to achieve great fame at a young age, but during our holy campaign against the Eastern Territories, he was captured. Everyone presumed him as dead. He died a war hero. He should have died as a war hero. But five years later, when we occupied the eastern capital of Jedediah, we also found what was left of Troder. He was but a shadow of his former self, a disfigured hunchback man with, with barely any resemblance to the great hero that so many adored. I am sure during those five years he went through every method of torture he now puts to use himself. Just to honor the mentor of Troder the White, I let this monster live today although I see a great contradiction in my words here. This establishes Captain Rudimer. He is a captain of the guards here in the dungeon, but something is obviously wrong in the dungeon. The guards are twisted, and Schroeder is here just as he is described in the first diary entry. So where's Captain Rudimer? He seems like he's in his right mind from this diary, so where is he? Captain Rudimer, 30th of April, 1590. It was a mistake to take this position here in the dungeons. It's next to impossible to keep any kind of order among the troops here. There are powers at play here that we as mere mortals cannot fight against. I've come to accept the madness. A naked prisoner, crucified on a sacrificial statue with his guts hanging out? Just another day in these dungeons. More and more troops are committing every day? More food for those who are left. Orders to let some cultists do some wicked rituals here? Anything goes. All the gore and macabre scenery has become trivial to me. The high priest demanded we give them our prized prisoner, Lagarde of the Midnight Sun. I hesitated at first, after all his worth in propaganda alone cannot be underestimated. But those priests somehow convinced higher-ups of their ways. Lagarde was transferred to the lower levels, below the mines. I have no idea what purpose there is behind this. Nothing good can come out of it, but orders are orders. I feel bad for the poor man. It's obvious the Kingdom of Ronan backstabbed him, just because he was getting influence at such a rapid rate. And now his story ends here, defiled in some unholy practices. This diary entry is now showing a little bit of what the dungeons are like. Something is very wrong here, and this normal-seeming night captain knows it. People are going mad, and there's a lot of dark stuff happening here. Let's continue. I've had feverish dreams for the longest time now. In the dreams, the patterns on the walls, the cause of the crows, the swirling clouds, they haunt me even in my waking hours. I haven't had a moment of tranquility in months. It almost feels like the dreams become wilder as the madness in these dungeons grows ever more stronger. I don't know which is the result of which. Did the dreams come before the madness, or are the dreams a result of the ever-ensuing chaos? 
Everything I see seems to remind me of these dreams, otherworldly patterns. I swear the intestines of a gutted prisoner from yesterday took the very shape. But when I try to describe its organic, ever-shaping patterns to scholars or draw it down on this very paper, I fail to do so. Like a bonfire with flames reaching out to the night sky, so is its shape without concrete form. These shapes are dangerous without a doubt. Effects like these are far too much for us mere humans to comprehend. I'm the epitome of their obsession, so I know better than any. I know it better than any. Maybe I'm the only sane one left to acknowledge this. Is it my responsibility to clean everything up once again? The crows. They give their testament to my suspicions. I'll start the purge. I'll root out the madness. Only I can do it. Ah, uh, now this makes sense. Captain Rudimer has started to get maddened by the darkness on this dungeon started twisting himself over the course of these eight or nine months. This is more than likely caused by the God of the Depths. You see, the God of the Depths is the God of the Lost and the Forgotten, as well as insects like cockroaches and birds. Like crows. You see what I'm saying? The Dungeon of Fear and Hunger has a way of corrupting people, even your playable characters, as you will not be able to leave once you enter this dungeon. So imagine what the darkness could do to you over the course of eight or nine months. It twists you into something horrible like the Crow Mauler. We can see how his morals get corrupted by the note called Captain's Orders, which details some orders to Troder from Captain Rudimer himself. On the subject discussed earlier in our last exchange, we no longer have need for those captives. What you do to this poor bastard is none of my concern. If you do go through your wicked plans, please make sure you leave no one talking about the studies performed. No witnesses, so to speak. Cruelty is not unheard of in times of war, I'm sure you, if anyone, should know this. But some things exceeded the limits of humans should ever experience. We do not want word going around. Take no insult in my words, but for my sake too, I hope I never hear from you again. Captain Rumor. You can see how he has been corrupted by the dungeons. Then we can see what happens at the end of his story before you get here in the note called Diary of an Unknown Soldier, 16th of August, 1590. The madness has spread in these dungeons like a plague. Some even suspected the plague that's running wild in Kingdom of Ronin is the cause for all this, but the symptoms are very different. Very different, to say the least. The remaining troops took refuge in these mines and hoped that the kingdom would send help at some point in the unforeseen future. The hope is running low, however. Captain Rudimer set foot into this underground city of the cave dwellers and traded that bizarre artifact for food and supplies. Now those supplies are running low. We try to scavenge food barrels whenever possible, but it's not enough to feed us all. The hope is indeed running low, as even the captain seems to have lost his mind some days ago. He ran into the dark dungeons on his own, wearing nothing but a sheet of cloth. We're gonna die down here, aren't we? So he lost his mind and took off all his clothes except for a loincloth and ran around in these mines, which is one place he can start chasing you. So Rudimer got corrupted and tried to purify all these dungeons from evil, and as it is said, when you stare into the abyss, the abyss stares back. He's also been in contact with the Cube of the Depths as he is the one who traded it to the cave village to get more supplies, so obviously Captain Rudimer became the Crow Mauler. What else could there possibly be to this story, Pugzer? Well, there's some more stuff that makes this a little more complicated. There is something wrong here. You wouldn't be wrong to assume that Captain Udermer is the Crow Mauler and that's all there is to the story, as that was pretty much what I thought before I started researching this. I had little bits of ideas here and there that didn't quite fit, and I wanted to learn more and obviously I needed a video, so this seemed like the one I was interested in. So what pieces don't fit, you may ask? Well, let's get into that. One piece is in the gauntlet, the deepest part of the dungeon. There is an enemy called the Double Crow Mauler. Even if you killed the Crow Mauler before, this one will still be here, and he is much more dangerous than the first one, as both heads attack. So there's more than one Crow Mauler. That seems weird. Another thing is a torn page from a book. Crow Crow Grow Your Horn, Vile as Snow in Scarsburg Massacre Row. Crow Crow O Why You Maul. The meat is fresh and the blood still falls. Crow Crow, are you there? He is coming with nothing to bear. Crow Crow, behind you now. Oh Crow, please reap. Oh Crow, what I sow. Robert Frost. This is not a huge problem, but in my head, it's kind of weird that this is from a book, as the description says. I feel like this is a folk tale or something, but you come here pretty soon after Captain Rudimer went crazy from the God of the Depths. This poem seems like it's been around for a while, so the Crow Mauler has probably been a thing for a very, very long time. So it's possible it's not as simple as Captain Rudimer equals Crow Mauler. It makes sense that he became a Crow Mauler, though. One cut content that is very similar to the third diary entry, there is a fourth diary entry, but I'm not going to read it in full, but it basically talks about the thicket and the big tree in which, which is the God of the Depths' realm, which is kind of redundant, 
We know he's corrupt by the God of the Depths, so that's why I feel like this might be cut, but I don't know for sure. I've also heard a theory on some YouTube videos that is just not true, and that is the cat, and that is that Captain Rittimer is moon scorched, and that's how he became the Crow Maul, which just isn't true. If you don't know what moon scorching is, it is the corruption of people through Rare's light, pretty much. It features prominently in Fear and Hunger 2, However, even if it's not moon scorch, it could be something very similar. It's possible that the God of the Depths does a very similar corruption like moon scorching, but in the God of the Depths kind of way. So it's possible that Rare has moon scorching and the God of the Depths has like crow mollification, I guess. There's another theory that all the characters you can play here are slowly turning into crow maulers in Fear and Hunger. The theory states that an ending E in Fear and Hunger is, is where you go mad and are turning into a crow mauler. If you don't know, ending E is where you try to leave after finding Lagarde, alive or dead. And then you pretty much are corrupted by the God of the Depths and go crazy and end up back in the dungeon somehow. So I guess it's possible that's what's happening in this ending, but I can't be for sure. Just a small note here, if you're wondering what the key did that we talked about earlier, it gives you the strongest weapon in the game, Miasma. I'm not sure if this has any correlation. I don't know if the Chrome Waller found this weapon or what, but there should, but there might be some correlation here, but we just don't know. One last thing before this video ends, in Fear and Hunger 2 Termina, if you play as Osa, you can do like a cool choose your own adventure style in the intro with Osa, and only Osa. In this choose your own adventure, Osa goes to the dungeon of Fear and Hunger almost 500 years later. He can encounter the Chrome Mauler again. He will be locked up for some reason and he will, and if he chases you, he'll fall off a bridge. Is this Rudimer or another Chrome Mauler? Well, only Miro knows and Miro's not telling. Thanks for watching. I appreciate all the support, and I love you all. See ya.